This episode is brought to you by Wear Buff, your go-to for Buffalo-inspired apparel. Get your hands on stylish t-shirts, hoodies, and more at wearbuff.com. That's W-E-A-R-B-U-F dot com. And make sure you use the promo code TWB at checkout for 10% off your first order. Stay Buffalo proud with Wear Buff. An unexpected hero emerges in the Bills' second preseason game against the Steelers this week on the Wandering Buffalo podcast. You're now listening to the Wandering Buffalo podcast with your host, Justin Godford. Bills Mafia, welcome into another episode of the Wandering Buffalo podcast, a show on the Buffalo Fan Base Podcast Network. My name is Justin, and I will be your host today. And this week, we are breaking down the second preseason game, this one coming against the Steelers. First look at the game, you know, you take a look at the box score, and it looks like it was a real doozy of a game. It's, you know, preseason football. It's already not the easiest thing to watch, and you got a a score of 9-3. to Ah. Feeling very drought era type score there. But honestly, having watched this game, I thought it was more exciting than the first week. And it really has nothing to do with like the Bills coming out on top. I don't care what the results of the preseason games are. But the team didn't look as lifeless and flat, boring. There was some action in the game. Now, I don't want to start on the offensive side of the ball today. That We're going to save that for the second segment. But I feel like had some things gone differently on offense, this could have been quite the blowout if you put this in the perspective of like if Josh Allen actually did start, you know, what it could have looked like. But I want to start on the defensive side of the ball today. Um, I think so often we start with the offense and I think that's easy to do. You know, offense scores the majority of the points. It's a scoring league. The rules they put in the NFL are really there. You know, they're trying to promote more scoring. They, they want more action in the game. So I think it's easy to start with your team's offense. But I thought kind of the heroes of the day we're on defense this week, and the the first name I want to talk about, kind of like the biggest name of this game, was Joe Andreessen. Kind of unlikely story here. We saw him last week kind of falling out, and for me at least, it was kind of, you know, is this just a quick little flash in the pan, preseason fun story? Then he has this game, and he ended up playing almost the whole game. He was out there with the ones. He had 12 total tackles, two tackles for loss. And just kind of watching him reading and diagnosing plays and moving sideline to sideline and triggering downhill and even some of his coverage reps, he looked like he belonged. And... It's it's easy to go to, you know, it's the preseason, you know, backups are out there, whatnot. This was a game where the Steelers played their two quarterbacks that are duking it out for for QB1, and they, they played the whole game um, in Russell Wilson and Justin Fields. And, look, I'm not sitting here saying that these guys are, you know, world burners or anything, top flight quarterbacks in the NFL. But it's not like, you know, Andreessen and and this defense as a whole, you know, we're out there playing against the fourth strings and looking good. These are, one of those two dudes is going to be an NFL starting quarterback. And if I'm being honest, they're Probably both going to be NFL starting quarterbacks this year because whoever gets the job first is is going to end up getting benched for the other one. Um, but in particular, the play that really sticks out to me for Joe Andreessen was 
against Justin Fields and Justin Fields for as much as he might not be a great NFL quarterback he is an elite athlete he has made teams pay with his legs he has great athleticism and he you know breaks the pocket and he's you know going trying to run pick up a first down and Andreessen takes this great angle you know, great pursuit speed and gets a solo tackle, you know, open field against Justin Fields. And that's impressive. Uh, Overall, I just, I felt like he looked like he belonged there. And this is going from a guy that, you know, we can call him an undrafted free agent. Like that, that's what he is, but it's even more than that. This guy was a tryout player for my money, a guy that, you know, only got a look, you know, a, a quick nod as, uh, you know, he grew up in Buffalo. He went to UB. Like, let's let him get a, some reps on the practice field and, you know, see what happens. Not a name that I was ever expecting to really stick around. And now I'm sitting here two se- preseason games down and I'm looking at, like, how do you keep this guy off the roster with what he's done in two weeks, even if that's, you know, roster depth? And then we add into it the injuries piling up. Obviously, Matt Milano, just an absolutely devastating injury. Looking like we're going to be out without him at, at least most of the season again. You have Bernard's a little banged up. Uh, it looks like he was going to play tonight, um, kind of similar to Josh Allen. You know, they don't end up playing. There were some rainy conditions before the game. Guessing with some of the other stuff going on, they just didn't want to take a chance. Uh, but you also have Bale Inspector as one of your depth linebackers who's never been able to stay healthy. Um, Nicholas Moreau is dealing with some stuff. All of a sudden... We're getting thin on numbers again because for some reason with the Bills, it's not just a rash of injuries they get. It's a rash of injuries that are all at the same position, which is super fun. But even if those injuries hadn't been happening, this is a young guy who is playing as well as any of the depth linebackers on the team right now. And... Like I said, even if the injuries weren't happening, I think it'd be a hard hard sell to not get this guy on the 53 somewhere. Uh, but that's, I guess, kind of like my highlight player on defense. Looking forward to see more action from him. But just the fact that he was, has jumped right up to playing with the ones and then kind of played throughout the game. Like they really wanted to see more from this guy. Uh, super excited there. Jump into the defensive line. This is a group that I've talked about a lot, you know, having my concerns here, just kind of with the depth, with some of the unknown. And yesterday was kind of, a, a breath of fresh air for me, I guess. In the first preseason game, you know, the whole team kind of looked flat. And in this game, I think we saw some juice. The defense looked fired up. They looked like they were coming out for, you know, a regular season game, ready to rock. And Greg Russo had an absolute monster game for the limited snaps that we saw him play. Comes away with two and a half sacks, and I think Groot is a player that has been good on this team. He's been great in run defense. He's shown the ability to get after the quarterback. He's he's shown himself to be, you know, like an above average good defensive end. I think with you know, some of the rawness that he had coming in, some of the injuries that he's dealt with, he's, like, right on the cusp of going from, like, that 
you know, he's a good defensive end to having those game wrecking type moments and his physicality, his size, his bend, he's got the package and just kind of getting the experience and getting the reps. And if, if we see a healthy season from Groot, look out. For me, if I was Brandon Bean, I would be trying to work out the details of that contract extension before the season is played. We know how the market goes for defensive ends. We know it's one of the positions that the money just keeps going up and up and up. We saw it when we when we signed a late in his career Von Miller. So these guys aren't cheap when they hit the market. He's still pretty young. I, I would be locking him up before before the season even starts. Ed Oliver adds a half sack, and I thought he looked good. The only player that I would say on the defensive line that I really wanted to see more from was Dwayne Carter, and I thought he had a nice game in the first preseason game. I think he was very stout against the run, which I kind of had him projected to be more of like a interior pass rush. Wasn't really sure about the run game. So that was exciting to see. I was hoping that this week we'd kind of build on that and, you know, maybe have some disruptiveness in, in the backfield. We'll see what happens there. He's a young player. He's, we, you know, with Daquan Jones and Ad Oliver in front of him, he's going to be a rotation player this year. Was just kind of hoping to see him pop a little bit more. Uh, Javon Solomon, I thought, looked like he had some juice in this game. He also ends up coming away with an injury. Uh, on the injury front, we also have one to Austin Johnson. So kind of that defensive tackle, defensive end group that I've been talking about, not feeling great. Not really being sure about the depth there. Well, now we have some injuries to depth, and we'll we'll see what happens there. We don't really know the extent of these injuries as of now. Probably erring on the side of caution, but I'm getting pretty sick of seeing the injuries pile up in the preseason. Uh, Linebackers, already talked about Andreessen. Just a great day out there. I thought Deion Jones had a good day too. And for being a guy that's kind of was talked about as one of, you know, a top flight linebacker in the league just a few years ago, has a shoulder injury and has kind of bounced around a little bit, never really regained that form. I, I'm not sleeping on him to, to have a role on this team, especially with, with that Milano injury and you know it's it's kind of a flip of the script for me from the beginning of the preseason because I I admittedly had thought he was a little bit older than he was you know I thought he was in the 30s and it's kind of like let's see how everything shakes out and you know I, I had him as maybe somebody that ends up being cut but I thought he's looked good out there it even in his coverage, he's looked good, and I feel a lot better about the linebacker depth that we're going to have to see tested early because of the Milano injury. Um, but I do feel a lot better about the depth at this position than I have in the past. Dorian Williams, I I have to get more looks at his coverage reps kind of hard to follow all of it on the first watch through Uh, but he remains an excellent athlete I think he plays great downhill he's got some more experience in this defense and he's he's lined up to have a big opportunity here with Milano out I don't think the I don't think the answer at the linebacker position comes from you know an outside addition I think Milano's replacement is going to be the next man up, and I think right now that's Dorian Williams. Do we see him look good enough in pass coverage to, you know, 
be able to be the full-time starter out there? Are we going to have to see, you know, some platoon swaps? Are we going to have to see some creativity like we did last year with, you know, Poyer basically playing as uh, like a box linebacker? Um, We'll see. But from what I saw in the first watch through, I thought Dorian Williams looked pretty good in this game as well. Secondary, we didn't see DeMar Hamlin out there. I thought that we saw some good moments from the the cornerback room. Taron Johnson in particular. Dude's an absolute beast, and he looks like he's in midseason form. And my biggest struggle with the preseason is is like loving to see my guys back on the field, but also, you know, not wanting to deal with injuries and it, it's a hard balance because I saw Taron Johnson make a play and I'm like, great, now get him out of there. He made another play. I was like, that's awesome. Now get him out of there. Uh, but Taron Johnson, I think, kind of remains an underrated player throughout the league. And I don't know how that's possible. He's an absolute stud. The cornerbacks, I didn't really see Elam get targeted much, which. I would say is probably some good news there. You know, if if they're not throwing the ball at you, probably because your receiver's not very open. Uh, Benford had a nice pass to break up early in the game. And I thought Jamarcus Ingram had a great game. And he's somebody that we've been watching. And, and honestly, we kind of get this similar storyline. And it, it seems like there's... Always one going on here with, you know, we had Cam Lewis. Then Jamarcus Ingram was the next one that was, was kind of this, you know, undrafted player who paid their dues through the practice squad and just kind of stuck around with the team. And Jamarcus Ingram is somebody I would keep on the roster right now. I thought he looked good. He had eight total tackles, six solo, just, you know, pretty big numbers for a cornerback. Um, and he also had some great contributions on special teams. He was on punt coverage. He kept being, you know, one of the first guys down around the ball. And I, I really liked Ingram last year and I, you know, wanted to see more from him. And I, I think we're going to get that this year. I think he's, you know, going to make the roster and we'll see what happens. Hopefully we can you know, have good health in the secondary and we don't ever have to see him in the regular season, but he had a good game. And Daquan Hardy, kind of rounding out my thoughts on the secondary, I continue to be kind of surprised that he's playing as like a a true boundary cornerback, you know, being a little bit smaller in size. I thought he was going to be just like the depth nickel, but he's been playing outside and I think he's holding his own. He also contributed a lot on special teams and, you know, with with KJ Hamler kind of having an up and down week, Hardy got like all of the return opportunities in this game. There's some of the punt returns. I, w- I want to look at these and get, you know, a couple different angles from them, but he fielded three, four punts like inside the five yard line and... I will say to his credit, he fielded them all clean. No, no muff punts, no ball security issues, uh, which is a plus. I have to take another look to see if all of those decisions were, you know, the smart decision to make. Should he have let them, you know, bounce into the end zone? These were some particularly long punts from the Steelers. They were traveling at 61, 65 yards. So maybe it's a case where he's kind of thinking, you know, he's out kicked the coverage. I'm going to have a window here and make some noise. And he did have a, a couple nice returns. So hard to fault him too much. But I will, this goes back like three, four years. It goes back to him. You know, Isaiah McKenzie, other guys were fielding punts, and we had some muff issues. And my 
my overwhelming stance will always be I, I don't need to get my points on a punt return. I don't need you just I don't need all my field position gains to come in the return game. It's a great bonus if we can get that, but my biggest concern is getting the ball back into Josh Allen's hands. So, you know, not not only like the the dangers of what can go wrong fielding a punt inside your own five. He had the one where he kind of went backwards and I think one of his feet actually did end up in in the in the Bills end zone. Um so you know you're setting up the risk for, you know, a fumble there that can turn into a touchdown, a safety, blah, blah, blah. Sometimes I'd prefer to just bounce into the end zone. Like I said, I, I'm not going to harp on this too much because maybe he, you know, had 20 yards of daylight in front of him. I have to get the all 22 footage on that because the, the broadcast angle isn't really great for showing you know, where the kick coverage is when they're about to receive the ball. So overall, I'm going to give him credit for the fielding it cleanly and having some juice in the return game. Moving on to the offense, and the offense was, a, it's, it's really tricky for me right now because I can sit here and you know, be glad we're not taking any chances with Josh Allen. Like I said, there was some rainy conditions before the game. He was supposed to start. They did the old bait and switch on us. But I think it's it's really challenging to get a good read on this offense with Mitch Trubisky being the starter. And it's it's disappointing as a fan trying to, you know, get my own evaluations of some of these players. But also, like, the coaching staff has the benefit of all of the practices, of all of the action that they see that we don't, the, you know, players' habits, all that kind of stuff. And we just have the games really to work with. But one of the one of my most intriguing storylines for this team going into this season is all the turnover on offense, the number of skill positions that, you know, we have different guys there. You know, what does the chemistry look like? What is, how's it all shaking out? And, you know, between Ben DiNucci and Mitch Trubisky passing the ball, if we take sacks out of the equation... 106 yards passing and an interception for Trubisky. It's just, it's not great for trying to get an evaluation on some of these players. Uh, Mitch Trubisky looked bad, bad to me. And sometimes it's really hard to sit in this chair and be like super overly critical of NFL players. He doesn't he doesn't look like a QB2 to me. He he looks like he has no confidence. It looks like he's not finding guys like like he's not going to pull the trigger unless the guy's running wide open and even then maybe he will, maybe he won't and will he hit the target if he gets there? There's just so much that goes into playing the quarterback position. You have to be willing to let the ball fly and maybe he's trying to to you know keep himself upright in the league by just like not making mistakes but by being concerned about making mistakes he's not making any plays either the you know 9 for 13 for 86 like it doesn't look like the worst stat line ever but if you watch the game like you know, he wasn't hitting anything, you know, throwing it down the field. There was a ton of check downs, just really not much going on. And Ben DiNucci, who knows? I mean, he's been in the building for about five minutes. He had three completions on five attempts for 20 yards. Is what it is. 
hopefully, you know, we have another regular season where Allen can stay healthy. You know, fortunately, he's been one of the the most durable quarterback in the league. But we're also looking at, you know, uh, the NFL being a league where the number of starting quarterbacks the teams had to roll out last year was an all-time high. Uh, It's kind of like the offensive line for me. We had great health luck last year. We'll see. we'll, We'll hope for it to continue, obviously, but... I have some very real concerns if we need a backup quarterback to come in and do anything more than hand the ball off or, you know, kneel out a game. The running game, and I'll pair the offensive line with this, was like a complete 180 from preseason week one. All of the running backs had success where last week none of the running backs had success. The offensive line looked like they were more fired up this game. They looked like they had some juice. There were still some some suspect moments. But Ray Davis is a guy that's getting me really excited. And I believe it was last week's show, I was kind of talking about how it was it was kind of like my hot take for the season that at some point this year, Ray Davis overtakes James Cook. It makes the future easier for the Bills to deal with on deciding whether or not to pay a running back big money. You know, you have a guy in James Cook that, you know, last year looked like, yeah, maybe let's give him the money, and then you bring in Ray Davis. If you can get similar production and avoid spending that big money on running backs when we've seen time after time in the NFL, it's really is very rarely a good investment. I think Davis looked intriguing in the passing game last week, but I guess I, nobody got anything done on the ground. Uh, this week, eight carries for 58 yards. He had a long one for 19 yards. And I just, I just, I like the way he runs. He you know, kind of plants the foot and gets downhill. He's got a good burst of speed. He can make people miss. But he goes through that hole like fired out of a cannon. And I don't want this to be, you know, I can't wait for James Cook to be gone, sound like slander or anything like that. I want to really enjoy these two players together this season and see what happens after there. But some of like those, how long have we talked about a running back being able to get the tough yards up the middle and, you know, having Josh Allen not have to do that all the time. And last year it was, let's bring in Latavius Murray and Damian Harris. Mixed results there. Ray Davis looks like he can be the guy that bangs between the tackles, but he's also good in the passing game. He's got some juice to him. So he's a player that each week I'm I'm growing more excited for. Ty Johnson did get some action in this game. He only had one carry for six yards. Cool with me. I I know where I stand with Ty Johnson. I I I really enjoy him being on this team. James Cook had six carries for twenty five yards. Darrington Evans seven for thirty seven, and Frank Gore Jr. eight carries for forty one yards. I thought Frank Gore Jr. has looked pretty good through two preseason, preseason, preseason excuse me, games. I think the important thing to focus on here, I I don't know if I'm the only one that gets guilty of this, but, you know, I see the name. I know the pedigree. I know what his father was able to do in this league, and I get really excited about it. Just looking at, you know, the way the reps shake out in the running back room. He's still coming in as the last man. Darrington Evans, who has kind of been this guy that has bounced around. You know, he's been on the Bills before. He hasn't really stuck to rosters. He's been a practice squad guy. He's still getting reps before Frank Gore Jr. And that's, you know, still being behind James Cook, Ray Davis, and Ty Johnson. 
So unless something catastrophic happens between now and the start of the regular season, I see Frank Gore ending up as a practice squad guy, and I'm, I'm fine with that. But I think for kind of not being the biggest or the fastest guy, I think it's encouraging that when he's given his opportunities, oh, he he's having an impact. He's he's producing with with the situations that he's put in, and that's all you can really ask out of a player. You know, control the controllables type deal and. Like I said, thus far, I, I think he's been pretty impressive. Moving into the receiving game, this is where I kind of have my conflict of, yeah, I don't want to see Josh Allen play any preseason games, but there's a ton that we need to learn about the passing game, and namely how the receivers are all you know, kind of gelling with the team. We have so much overhaul here. And it's it's just it's almost like a disservice to the offensive weapons that are trying to make a name that the passing game just can't get off the ground. And you know, we have our guys on the team that haven't really like Shakir, for example, didn't do much in this game. I'm I'm not concerned about Shakir. I know what he and Allen look like together from last season. They were electric. It's super fun. But then you get into a guy like Matt Collins, who I'm really excited for. Two catches on two targets for seven yards. Like that not much to work with there. The big one, Keon Coleman had three targets one reception for 12 yards, and the reception that he had was a nice one. The one that will be talked about the most is the one kind of in the red zone. He's running like a quick slant, and Trubisky gets the ball out fast, and Keon Coleman short arms it, and, you know, it looked like he... Felt the contact coming from the safety. He gets his hands on it. He doesn't bring in the catch. And I've seen this one going both ways, you know, through like social media. Some people kind of defending him of like making a business decision in August and, you know, not wanting to take that hit. And some people being, you know, well, it wasn't a good throw. I land somewhere in the middle on this, like, uh, it wasn't a good throw. It was, you know, leading him into contact. It was, you know, you're hoping that ball's kind of right on the body and it's kind of leading him to leaning into a big hit that's about to happen. And, you know, it if he kind of like lays out to make that catch and gets smacked and gets hurt before the season started, I'm going to be upset with that. And I'm going to sound like I'm talking out of both sides of my mouth here, and I kind of am. I, I'm a podcaster. I'm sitting in a chair. I can want <laughs> I can want my cake and eat it too. For me, that's one that I want to see Coleman bring in. We brought you in as this big physical body that's supposed to win contested catches. And if you were a four-year veteran that's been doing it in the league and, you know, you have four touchdowns a year that look like that and you decide to kind of pull up short and not take the hit in preseason, fine. But as much as I don't want to see injuries, as much as I don't want people taking unnecessary risks, he is a player that hasn't done anything in the league yet. He, through two weeks and limited reps, he has like two catches for 20 yards. If you're brought in to be that big physical receiver, I I want to I want to see that play made preseason or not. And it was a bad throw. It was wobbly. It, it just looks weird. It's 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 not an aesthetically pleasing throw. But he gets his hands on it, and that's the type of play that Keon Coleman was brought in to make. So 
Again, the context of preseason, it's hard, but I have my expectations. Um, KJ Hamler, one catch for nine yards. Nothing too exciting there. In the battle of the tight end three, we had some action here. Zach Davidson having, you know, the the biggest catch of the day was a nice corner route, um, 27 yards. Quentin Morris had two catches on four targets for 20 yards. He came up a little injured in this game. So who knows, maybe an opportunity opens up for Davidson at least short term. We'll see how serious the injury is. Like like I said, we haven't really gotten uh, anything for updates yet. And then also on the injury front, another guy that's been kind of battling it out to, to make a spot on this roster. Um, MVS came up with uh, a pretty good hit and... It looked to me like maybe he has like a stinger going on. We'll see what happens there. Like I said, we got to get these injury updates as they go. But MVS, who is already kind of dealing with some drop issues and hasn't really made a, a ton of noise on this team through training camp thus far, I I think that, you know, if it's anything more than a week or so, and we kind of see a guy like Terrell Shavers, who's been popping off, or like through training camp, didn't do much in this game. Um, just some of that, the depth on this roster, and then the Bills add a receiver in Demir Bird. If it's something where MVS is going to be out for a couple, I mean, really anything beyond the start of the preseason, I, th- I think that might be a situation where I think it might be a situation where he has he made enough noise throughout the, the offseason program to be able to survive a cut down day while injured and sitting here August 18th I I don't know that he has and the guaranteed money that's involved with his contract I just think Bean has shown that you know it it's not a huge substantial amount of money but I think Bean has also shown that even if it is bigger money if they make a decision that looks like it's, you know, going to be, if they make a decision that looks like they've made a mistake, they're willing to move on from it. So we'll see what happens there. Another week of preseason to go. A lot more to look at. This will be kind of probably the game where we see a lot of the depth. We probably won't see any of the starters and just kind of duking it out for the tail end of roster spots, the depth spots. So we'll see what happens week three preseason. We're getting pretty close to the regular season. We'll be breaking down games every week, talking Bills football. Make sure you like, share, subscribe if you've made it this far. We're get we're getting really close, and we're trying to push for 1,000 subscribers on YouTube. So if you could hit the subscribe button, it would mean the world to us. More than ever, tell a friend about the show. It's a big milestone that we've been, you know, really trying to get to. And and we're so close. We're like 70 off right now. So do ask that you do me that favor. It helps us with the show. It gets us excited. And it's, it's greatly appreciated. Uh, make sure you're checking out the website. Follow us on social media. All the good things. Uh, Thank you for joining me on this week's episode, and we'll be talking more preseason football next week. As always, go Bills.